I'm pretty sure you use Python and Pandas for your Excel workflows. But once the size of the Excel files increase beyond a point, Pandas becomes really sluggish. Well, you don't have to worry about the sluggishness of Pandas anymore. Well, today marks the release of Rapids version 23.10, which is basically nothing else but Rapids CUDF or Rapids CUDA data frame library. So with this particular library and this particular release, what you can expect is a speed up of around 200 times without changing any line of code. In the previous versions of CUDF, you had to change some amount of Pandas code. But if you have legacy Pandas code with you, and if you want to start using GPUs, then all you have to do is you have to change zero lines of code to start utilizing the power of GPUs. Isn't this amazing? Now I'll quickly show you how this is done with the actual implementation. So let's go. Before I jump and show you the power and magic of CUDF, let me start off the activity by downloading a data set. So before I download a data set, what I'll do is I'll initiate a session on Google Colab. So I'll press on connect. The entire process may take a while, but I've already selected a GPU instance. So I'm getting a T4 GPU currently in this particular instance. So I have my session up and running. Now I'll quickly go forward and I'll click on the download the data set section. So let me unhide the cell. Due to some recent changes in Google Colab, I had to start off by importing a module called as local. This module is used for various purposes related to localization. In our case, we'll use it to set the preferred encoding to UTF-8. So let me kickstart this activity by running or executing this cell. Next, we're using a command line tool called as wget to download a file from the internet. In this particular example, I'm fetching a sample sales record file or a data set from a website and saving it as a zip file on our system. So let me quickly run this cell as well. Now we have the zip file with us. In order to work with the zip file and also the files, we'll require the OS and the zip file modules. The OS module allows us to interact with the file system and the zip file helps us managing zip files. So I'll quickly import the files and then using the zip file module, I'll basically extract the contents of the zip file. So I'll quickly run the cell. Now we've successfully extracted the data set from the zip file. Now I'll use the os.path.getSize function to show you the actual file size. So let me quickly run the cell. So I'm dealing with a file of around 600 MB. So this is a pure CSV file that I'm dealing with. So what I'll start with is the activity of using pandas. I'll show you the overall time taken for different manipulations done in pandas. Then in the next section, what I'll show you is the magic of rapid CUDF without you having to change even a single line of code. How you can achieve huge speed ups using rapid CUDF is what I'll show you. So sit back, enjoy the entire ride. And I'm pretty sure you would start using rapid CUDF in your day to day workflow. So let's start with the pandas activities. In order to analyze data, firstly, what you'll have to do is you'll have to read the data. So I'll quickly unhide the cell and here is our simple command where I start off with importing pandas as PD. And the next thing that I do is I read the CSV file from the location where I've saved the file and I load it into a data frame DF and I print the first three rows of the data frame. So I'll quickly run the cell. I've added the magic time command to tell me how much time the entire cell is taking. So let me quickly run the cell. So as you can see, here are the first three rows of the data frame. And here, if you look closely, this is the overall time taken for the entire execution. So if I just go by the wall time or wall clock time is basically the real time. It basically signifies how long it took for your entire code to run in the real world time. So you have different bifurcations as well. So here you have user time, which is around 8.93 seconds. So think of user time as the actual processing time used by your Python program. 
you have something called a system time as well. So system time is the time spent by the CPU outside of your Python code for doing OS related tasks such as IO, memory management, etc. So what we look at in the entire video is the wall time that is in our case to read a 600 MB file in a GPU instance which was configured on Google Colab, it took around 10.2 seconds. Okay. With the data now in our data frame, let's move forward. Let us start by actually counting the overall null values that are present across rows and columns. Okay. So I want to count the overall non null values across columns. So which is where the first command comes in, which is df dot count access equal to zero. And I also want to time the entire operation, which is where I've kept the time magic command. So I'll quickly run the cell to count the overall non null values across the columns. So let's start. So here we have no null values, which is what is signified in the result as well. And the overall time taken is around five seconds. Let me perform the same activity across rows. And I'm assuming this will take more amount of time as compared to the columns. So I'll quickly run this cell as well. So here it's giving me how many non null values exist at every row. And finally, it's giving me the wall time as well, which is 6.21 seconds. Okay. Now when I keep moving forward, now this was the first activity that I wanted to do is I wanted to start off with a very simple manipulation. Now I'll start increasing the overall complexity of the manipulations as well. Just to give you context, these are the top three rows that we have in our data set. We have region, country, item type, sales channel, order priority, order date, order ID. Ship date, unit sold, unit price, unit cost, total revenue, total cost and total profit. Okay. Now I want to do some deep dive analysis on this particular data set and I want to time all of the analysis as well. So let me start off the activity with the first question that I have in mind. How many item types? So item types is here. So how many item types are there across different countries and regions? Okay. This is the answer that I want through my pandas operation. So I'll quickly unhide the cell to show you the operation and the amount of time it's going to take. Okay. So this is the command. I start off the activity by selecting the three columns that are required in this analysis, which is region, country and item type. Once all of that is in place, I call the value counts function to kind of count the overall values that are present in every group. And then I do a group by, so I want the grouping to be done by region and country. I only want the first item to be shown in this entire item type. I want the entire data frame result to be sorted by the index. And then I also want to reset the index, which will kind of help me answer the above question that I have in mind. So I'll quickly run this cell. The cell will give me the result as well as it will give me a timing for the result. So I'll quickly run the cell. So here is the answer that I have, which is region, country and item type count. So uh, say for example, for Asia, Bangladesh, beverages, this is the overall count of the total item types that are present. Okay. And if I look at the overall timing, I'm again considering only the wall time, which in our case is 1.48 seconds. Okay. Next up, we'll kind of go a bit deeper in terms of analysis. I want to understand what is the cumulative unit sold across all countries. Okay. In this particular example, what I'm doing is I'm grouping the data frame by country because I want the cumulative unit sold across all countries. Then I apply an aggregate function called as sum on the units sold column. Then I rename the column unit sold to sum of units sold, which is something that I'm doing. And finally, I sort the values based on the unit sold column. So I'll quickly run this particular cell. So overall there are 185 unique countries in the data set, which is what is visible here. And this is basically the sum of units sold and it's kind of taken around 414 milliseconds, which is still really fast, but I'll show you the speed up that you can achieve when you start using rapid CODF with this entire activity. Now I want one more answer to the question that I have, which is, how do units sold vary across days of week, which is where I kind of kickstart the activity by defining a dictionary. The dictionary has numbers from zero to six, which signify the day of week starting from Monday. 
then I convert the column ship date into a pandas equivalent date time format. And finally, I call the issue underscore weekday function, which basically maps every date into whether it's weekday or weekend. So that is something that it's doing. And finally, I run a group by command wherein I group by country and issue weekday and I count the overall units sold for that particular day. So I'll quickly run the cell. So here the overall wall time taken is around 7.32 seconds. And here it's giving me at a country slash weekday weekend level, uh, how much of the overall sales are happening on that particular date. Okay. So overall, this is the performance. Every command is taking around five to 10 seconds with some exceptions here and there, but overall pandas is doing a decent job. And given that I'm using a high end machine on Google collab, it's doing a reasonable job according to me. Okay. With this release of rapids, you don't have to change any of your pandas code and all the optimization has been done by rapids in order for the adoption of rapids so that you can start using GPUs in your workflow. Almost 60% of the pandas commands have been ported to rapids UDF library. So which is where you can get almost 60 to 70% of the functionality covered for the 30%, the entire pandas code will run on a CPU. For the 60% of the code which has been optimized to run on a GPU, all of that will run on a GPU without you having to change any line of code. Isn't this amazing? So I'll quickly start the activity by installing CUDF. I'm creating this video well before the public launch. Given that the public launch is happening today, I'll kind of modify this particular notebook and share it across with all of you so that you have to install it in bare minimum steps. Okay. So firstly, let me mount my Google Drive. So I've successfully mounted my Google Drive as well. The first thing that I'll do is I'll run this command to install the initial part. So I have the installation in place. Now what I have to do is I have to restart the runtime, which is what I'll do right now. So the next piece is I have a private wheel file, which is what I'll install. But once you see this video, this will be like a one line code wherein you can just seamlessly install the CODF package and yeah, you can kickstart the activity. So I'll quickly install this piece as well. So we have the entire installations up and running. What I'll do next is a simple check in terms of checking if I have a GPU allocated to me or not which is where I have a Tesla T4 allocated to me. So I have a GPU up and running for me. The other piece is I'll run this command to see if CUDF is working fine or not. So I'll import CUDF. This entire cell also executed without any errors. So CUDF is working perfectly fine for me as well. Now what I'll do is I'll run this cell to restart the runtime. So the restart has happened. So next up, what I'll do is I'll call the command load underscore external and I'll call the CUDF dot pandas command. So let me quickly run this. I'll go back to the initial cells without changing any line of code. What I've done is I've loaded CUDF dot pandas. So you don't have to change any line of your Python code or pandas code. So let's quickly move forward. So let's start the activity by the initial command that we had, which is importing pandas as PD. But here I'll have a CUDF based pandas loaded already. So I'll quickly run this and I'll quickly try to read the file. So previously it took around 10.2 seconds. Let's now time it in terms of how much time the entire GPU version will take to read the CSV file. So let me quickly run this. So the entire time taken in terms of reading the file is 522 milliseconds. So previously it was 10 seconds. Now it's 522 milliseconds. This is the amount of speed up that you start getting once you start using a GPU. Let me perform the same activity of counting the overall non null values across columns. So let me start off with this activity. Keep an eye on this particular field as well. The overall wall time for the CPU was around 4.98 seconds. Now when I run this, it takes 12.5 milliseconds. As I've mentioned, not everything is optimized, which is where this particular df.count across rows, which is axis equal to one, will consume some amount of time. 
How much time? Let's figure that out as well. So I'll quickly run this cell. So this takes around 9.86 seconds. We'll come to why this happens, but let's keep moving forward. I'll quickly try to answer the questions that I have. So previously, if you look at this particular wall time, it was around 1.48 seconds, which is decently good. So I'll quickly run this. And it takes 94.3 milliseconds. So from a second to 94.3 milliseconds, from 414 milliseconds to let's see the speed up that we get. So it's 23.3 milliseconds, almost like a 30, 40 times speed up is what I'm getting. And if you start using a high end GPU, then literally sky is the limit. And finally, for the final question, how do units sold vary across days of the week? So this is what I have here. And this is the CPU time, which is 7.32 seconds. Let's now look at the speed up. So I'll quickly run this. So here you have the result as well, which is 92.4 milliseconds. So overall, if you just visualize how things are moving, you are getting at least 40 to 50% speed up. Again, it all depends on the kind of GPU that you're using. Uh, sometimes you're getting even speed ups of around 100 to 150 times as well. This is the power of rapid CUDF and with the current release, what you've done or what I've essentially done in this entire activity is I have not changed a single line of Pandas code. Now you might be having a question, which piece of code does the CPU handle? Which piece of the code does the GPU handle? So I'll show you that as well with the same piece of code, but with one addition in terms of the line. Okay. So I'll quickly go up. Rather than using the time function, what I'll say is cudf dot pandas dot line profile. So I'll quickly run the cell. So the entire piece of code runs in GPU, which is where the entire execution is pretty fast. I do the same activity for this particular piece of code as well. And here you have the entire solution. So some piece of code tries to run on a GPU, but it sees that it's not very favorable for a GPU execution, which is where it again switches back to the CPU. So things which are not optimized for a GPU still run on a CPU. Things which have been optimized on a GPU run entirely on a GPU. So this is something that I wanted to show you today. I hope you found this video informative. If you do like the video that I create on data science, machine learning, GPU, generative AI and the other topics, make it a point to subscribe to my channel as it motivates me to create more such amazing videos. Thank you so much.